Well, it's a lovely study. A row of cottages. I suppose this is Burnham Overy. On the way back to Burnham Market. Make a nice little cottage study. Okay, well it's another painting um, out in the um, garden of my accommodation here on the North Norfolk coast and it's a study of local cottages which are just down the road from here uh, about a five minutes walk and um, I just thought they shone in sunlight and I just fancied putting those down. So let me lead you through the painting process. Well, as always, I show you my setup. I have the laptop with the subject there, little sketch that I've done, and the drawing now on the board. Well, here we go then. That's the two brushes yet again. Uh, that's about all I've used this week, really. Uh, the number four pointed mop and a small rigger. Now the first thing I'm going to do is to lay on the sky, It'll be a very simple sky, and I'm actually going to damp some of the area. I'll be picking around the church tower and the buildings, and we've got red tile roofing, so we need that to um, remain fairly um, white, really, I'm going to leave that white. Okay, sun coming from the right, so most of the blue, and I'm going to use Windsor Blue again. That's what I'm going to use. Just straight Windsor Blue. There, whoops, don't go over the chimney. There's an area that was meant to be preserved. So there you go, that's the way things go when you're really um, interested in a subject, really, I suppose. Um, look at that on there. Anyway, we're not getting bogged down with this. A couple of little cloud areas there. This is going to be a, quite a quick painting. So, you know, we're not looking for anything too fussy. And around the building there. And of course, once we get to the um, right hand side, we weaken it considerably and pull some of that water into that area and that will make a difference to the way that dries by pulling the water into that area the area will change there we are just get rid of that um lovely i like having the blue there um and then because that's, you'll notice that there'll be a change there because that's damper than that. May even get a little cauliflower effect. And on the right hand side, I'm going to use raw sienna. It's not particularly um, rich in colour. Um, and I'm going to sweep that through. And a little bit of lemon yellow, cadmium lemon going in. Oh, and a little bit of red, Indian red. There you go. Look at that. All you do, clean the brush and you just blend it on the paper basically and because we've brought that up to there i'm going to bring that round to there not too concerned if it goes slightly green um, but that gives us the feeling that we've got light coming from that right hand side and that's really all you need to do there we are when you just allow that to um <coughs> do its own thing oh well, let's put a little bit of that the underside of that cloud and the underside of that cloud. There we are. So we're affecting it as it's drying, really. Um, that's all good. Yeah, I don't mind that at all. And bring that down there. That already was a little wide. And then just while that's like that, I'm just going to put a bit of blue into that. And then just leave it. A bit of blue up there. There we go. That just helps to marry it all together really right <clears throat> now i'm going to do the road and the road is quite blue yet again but this time i'm going to use cobalt blue into that 
and I'm going to start off with cobalt blue and the road comes around there like that now that is not the blue, the colour of road I'm looking for but if you put a bit of light red into that and spread that away as you go around the corner it greys it up like that then you add a little bit more light red as you come forward and then another little touch of light red and that's a bit more than a touch but that's fine we just spread that through and this is a good thing I want to show you how you really do need to have a bit of fun with your um, with your sketches and immediately I've created a film of depth by putting a little bit of that red sliding off like that there we are next comes the roof uh, the tile work and that will be um, just purely light red I think it's not a bad red for, for pan tile roofs roof work really and I'm not looking for detail at all it's going to be fairly simply painted and the main red is going into that part of the roof and I shall enhance that now by banging it a little bit more oh and a little bit of burnt sienna can I pick up a bit of burnt sienna yes I can and I'm just streaking down just to give an impression of those pantal roofs they will dry just that little bit uh, and this one is going to be still red but I'll put a bit of blue with it because I don't want this one to dominate that one there we go all the time being aware of where the lights and where the darks will be and I'm just putting a bit of red with that and in particular at that angle again because it is a red tar red pantal roof but we've got to watch that we don't overpower because I don't want the eye led I want it led to this area not outside the picture there we are so that's the roof area and of course while we have this red tile work um, we've got some detailing around the window and uh, where will it come there well there is a bit of detailing across there like that along the gutter line there we are and do we have it under the seal no we don't so really it's just around the uh, the edging and there is a pattern for this but I'm not um, I'm not getting into that because it's not that type of painting it's um, it's very impressionist because all I'm hoping to do is to capture the light on this particular subject so if you watch closely um, another top there or oh, a little bit around the doors possibly but anyway there's certainly some there uh, a little bit around window there a bit around that window there's a bit of a climber there so um yeah I think that's probably probably oh there is just a little bit underneath there um, oh and while we have this colour yet again this wall is a grey grey warm grey um, flintstone and there's varying depth, varying tones of flint in there but that's basically the start then we have one, two little warmer pieces like that. Want to leave some white uh, and one or two yellow pieces as well here and there. It's all going to be in shadow, but you need a bit of colour on there. 
there we go. Now I don't want that church to stand out. I want that to sit right back. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to use ultramarine with Indian red and turn that in to start with. That is going to be my shadow colour. So I'm creating that as a shadow um, which will be just purely um, let's do the buttress areas first there and then we're painting down so it's not the true colour this is the shadow colour we have to finish that roof off shortly right then a much lighter blue going in this side because I want that to soften and finish away in the background. Don't want that to be of any real um, substance. Now I'm using a little more blue here for the painting of the roof work. I don't mind a bit of that bleeds through. So that's the roof. And this is the roof as it goes away into the distance. It's a uh, it's a flash roof it's it's certainly a interesting area and then we have the belfry area there we'll attend to that shortly and this area is somewhat lighter so I'll just scratch that down there we are it's a lovely bit of light on there isn't that lovely you know, there's no need to paint everything in. That's the worst thing you can do when you're um, painting a subject. A bit of red now in, just to pull this roof slightly forward. But overall, pantile roof, but treated very simply. And I'm going to put the chimney in, in that same colour. Treated very, very simply. And that's all you need to do for the background uh, building. Okay, well I've painted the, that uh, part of the church in there, that roof of the same colour. I'm using the same colours. But I just want to show you this area here. And I'm going to paint around those figures. Because those figures are going to stand out much lighter than the background. There we are, and I'm going to pull that colour down so it's darker in the lower area where the figures stand, like that. Very simple treatment. There we go. So that's actually coming along very nicely. Lovely warm colours. Good, well I'm going to use Windsor Blue, you can use Prussian, same thing, um, with the cadmium red to get that sort of very blue don't mind a bit of red in there purpley mix and let me show you the way I'm going to treat these windows because I do uh, I do advocate windows being um, let's do these first it simply painted well you wouldn't get any simpler than that would you semi dry brush that's a window and draw off, so push down and then draw off as you get to the lower part of the window. Because, to me, one window there and another one along the front there. Look at that, windows are in. Isn't this watercolour lovely? While that's drying, what I'm going to do is to um, use cadmium yellow with, it's a bit muddy there, just right, with a bit of Windsor blue. So it's not a real vibrant green, um, but I'm going to paint in, we've got a bit of border here, right, and 
I'm going to put a bit of brown into that, my normal procedure. That's burnt sienna, just to show that the bank's higher really. And then a bit more yellow now, because we've got some a little bit of grass there running across there. I think there's a, something going on here with that grass business. And then there's a little bit there, two little, a bit of a border that runs a little bit of an entrance there where obviously you get that and then you run that along there like that. And it is winter. Well, it's not spring really, but all I'm saying is that we don't have any um, major um, flower work going on there. And while I have this green, I'm going to produce this, this green verge. And that comes down like that. Then I'm going to put in a little bit of our brown again, here and there, sparked up. Not everywhere, just one or two little touches, not too much going out of picture. And a little bit here along that edge. Because will make all the difference to the look of that. And then a little bit of burnt umber. And what I'm going to do with this, get a semi-dry brush because there is some interesting creepers that are standing up in places. I'm just watching where they are. There's sort of like a creeper there of some sort. Uh, anything along the end? Oh, there may be just something on that end there. Uh, you've got to watch that you're only putting them in where you actually uh, need them. There's a little bit of red dropped in around that area. I want the door to attract the eye, and there, then there is just a little bit of something going around that part of the building, but this could very well be... Um, gradually lost and away eventually but that's that nothing around there there no there you go then that's the creepers now I'm going to use a strong red for the um, for the chimneys and I'm going to paint this one first I'm going to do the back edge first like that and of course chimney pots and the back edge of that these two will keep the same tone back edge of that chimney pot back edge of that um, we just put a tint of red on that one there you go Look at that. then um, this one I'm just killing back with a bit of brown just so as it's not quite as intense because as I say that one doesn't need to be as strong. Yep. Now, just while we have this brown in, I'm going to take a little bit off the brush because we do have some planting that runs right up there. And I like the idea of that because we can actually then see that masks a bit of the building behind but also shapes the figures up in the corner of that building as well. And because it's red, I don't want to go over that building too much, but because it's red, you gradually lose it. But of course, when you come to the lower area, you need a bit of blue in there. So any blue does it. There we are. And that, take that a little bit higher, shall we? Don't want to go too high with that. There we are. That depicts something behind the building itself. A bit more red. We have a red cap to this. To this wall and we also have a bit of foundation red, I think. And that gets larger as it comes forward. There you go.
Now we've yet to do the building um, and I'm just going to use raw sienna, very weak, with a little light red in there. It wants to be quite weak because this is stonework. So consequently there's a light, medium and dark stone within that. that beautiful that's perfect for this lovely stonework building and we'll do the same with that I think make that a bit more dense there and while I have that do you know what I'm going to do I'm going to do the front of those chimneys let me just loosen that so we've got a lighter so we can see where the chimney there we go front of the oh and that top of that ridge as that comes down um bu 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 boom oh and just take some dark paint and put the here we are that's the um weather vane really now bit the figures. Right, one of those figures going to have leave a bit of light on the left hand side, sorry the right hand side because that's where the light is coming. All right, and one is of that colour, the other one is cobalt blue. That one is also got a little bit of light on one side and the head, well I'm going to elect to put light hair on one, it's already there, oh well let's go do the dark hair on the other one, and that's burnt umber, could be the face, we don't know. Also the legs, bit of movement if you can, other than that, not too, not too bothered with what we've got there. That seems to work. Um, four figures. There we go. Tell you what, we're not far off finishing with shadows. Now my shadow for today is Indian red and Windsor blue or Prussian blue. So it gives a lovely tone now. To start off, all I'm going to do is just produce these buttress areas and here, just give that a little hint of a buttress and of course inside there, the belfry and a little bit of shaping there, a little bit there and the Belfry window, I would presume that's what that is. There we go. And I think that probably is all we need except casting shadow from that area onto that roof line there. Because I'm pretty much happy that that is dark enough for the shadow itself. And then we have a shadow under that roof line, shadow there, we have a shadow there. And we do have a window in there, so I'm putting that in as well. Uh, it's like a large sort of window there. Uh, all very impressionist, must be, because that's the way I want that background to, um, to show up. In actual fact, I'm going to bring that shadow right the way down because it's probably shaded from that roof line there as that goes back and the underside there. And that can also go around the figures like that. Just a little bit of light 
coming through, but other than that, it's going to be quite dark there. There we go. Perfect. So that is all we shall do for that area. That looks quite interesting little area. And of course, we will have, let's have that in shadow, like that. Maybe a little bit of interest down that edge. Let's just rub that away. There we go. Okay. Right. Now, the building. Now, this is where I really love the, um, the feeling of a shadow that runs underneath the guttering, down into the window, and we just pull that across. A nice deep shadow, not too dark, and just pull it right the way across, like that. Then we have a shadow that comes down to the sill there, to the sill there, to the sill there, and that is all in shadow, casting a shadow on across the side there, and into the door. And then we have a shadow running across the top, down the right. So all of a sudden these windows begin to look a bit more like windows. And just a little bit underneath with the point to give that impression of a seal. And of course now we have a shadow inside that door that's cast from the porch area that goes at that sort of angle like that and then across and down like that and then we don't really have a shadow on the top because that sort of like slides off at that angle yes oh and of course inside the door as well nearly forgot that and there may be some fixtures and fittings on there, so there we go. All of a sudden, we've got a lovely funnel of a door opening, and of course, we've got the same here, like that. Might as well continue that right through there, there. Uh, oh, yes, yeah, let's not forget this door here, similar sort of attention or treatment goes in like that, here we go, and then we've got a door there, and there may be a little bit of addition there, but other than that, a lovely funnel of a door. Now there are other shadows of course, we've got um, from the chimneys on the roof, like that, one there, one there, and of course one there. Personally I think I've already got the shadow just down the back edge of those, um, under there and under there, but I've already got the shadow colour I think for the, uh, here we are, for the chimneys themselves. I think I'm happy with those, they really ping out, that's what I'm looking for really. Um, now, um, just a little bit of dappled shadow within that area there. And of course, under the figures. Like that. Two little touches here and there. Uh, and that enhances the whole thing. You know, that um, gives us the, the, the feeling that we do have interest across that window, oh, and down there, of course. Got to remember the light coming from the right, so we've got to be aware that that's where the the light would be. Good. Now I'm going to use a bit of license here. To create a nice foreground shadow. Now you know me with with my foreground shadows. I have to have them, don't I? Well, for start off, that's in shadow. That's the first 
thing I'm going to remember and I'm going to bring that down to there a different shadow to that so this is all in shadow so don't you know no need to paint all of it you can leave a little bit of unpainted area then of course we've got the that building I'm going to paint right up hello wind's getting up like that and then that wall creates a shadow running across there like that then as it comes into the foreground the shadow really gives a bit of treatment now let's give that some real strong treatment while it's still damp there we are and then all of a sudden we have that lovely sweep and I tell you what let's have what I'd class as a cloud shadow or a shadow from somewhere casting across that roof line just holding in that side and all you do you put that on like that and then you soften the outside edge and that gives a bit of interest without the need for any major um, treatment I suppose then that's going to finish there then we're going to have another sort of subtle shadow there perhaps it ain't quite so subtle perhaps we're going to have that shadow running like that really pings the whole thing together good finishing touches now to start with I'm using red finishing touches so that's along the top of that not getting rid of all of that white I want that white to shine a little um, then we need um oh, we've got some um right okay there we are a suggestion of ridge tiles and i said a suggestion because that's all that is very loosely painted and um Yeah. then we've got the gutter so we're going to pick up this dark shadow color do we have any down pipes can't see any actually so I'm not quite sure where they are but and then we're going to have shadow on the ridge tile I don't want to put everyone in but just one or two and that brings that right to the edge there there we go then this is a little area that stands up you get that a lot on these um, uh, roof lines in Norfolk there's a like a, a ridge there and that's just depicted by those that's it and this can take a little bit of a ridging um, but not to any great extent and then we're going to use a bit of red again for the inside of the windows now I don't know why but this always seems to enhance a window gives it that little glint that, and without it I don't think it quite works and of course the door frame just soften that a little it's a bit heavy <laughs> Ooh, that's nice that's nice a bit of light that's what I'm looking for and if you can capture light on buildings I'm sure you'll be more successful there we go and just one or two little patches of this sort of warm colour just dotted in in places just to show 
the H there and of course within this shadow area two little touches there we don't want too many there the main part of this scene is you know the that area there it's doing it for me and um, shall we just show a little bit of dotting around if there's some panes of glass here and there only in the top area because I don't want that to go too far good Ooh, and there may be a little bit of tile work on the top of these porch areas I forgot about that which is uh, there no I don't think I'll do that one I don't I don't want that one seen too much um, well I think that's the end that is about as far as we can go let me just put in and um, we do have a bit of tree work let's just put in just to justify that hedging there I just think we, are, we don't want to make too much of that I must admit I'm in danger of um, overdoing that so let's leave that alone um, yeah I think we're more or less at the sign up time well I'm going to sign this on the left hand side somewhere about there in some of this dark paint that I've just used for shadows I just feel that's probably the um, right place so there you have it cottages uh, on the outskirts of Burnham Market it's Burnham Overy um, village and um, I just want to capture light and I think to a fairly big extent um, I've done that Well, this is my fourth study of the week. It's uh, lovely cottages here in North Norfolk. We've got the um, stonework and the red tile um, brickwork and red tile work. And um, overall, I think it came off uh, quite well. Um, if you've enjoyed watching that, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, I'll be uploading more videos very shortly. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed that little look into how I interpret these lovely cottages here on the North Norfolk coast. Thank you for watching and we'll see you all again very, very soon.